So let's just dive into the product overview. So let me kind of take you through it. Basically, this is what you see when you come into your main work drive screen. Uh, if you haven't, if there's some files that you are following or other things, they will show up here in unread, things that you need to look at, they're gonna show up here. Uh, but basically then if you go and you kind of click down to your recent files, you can see the things you've been working on recently. This is a demo account, so excuse what we've got in here. Uh, I've got this price list for internal use only. Um, we're going to talk about sharing options a little later, and we'll talk about permalinks and, of course, download self-explanatory. But you've got the little more ellipse button through here that gives you kind of all the things you really can do with that document. Once You can basically do all these things once you've opened it up as well, but we're going to cover them right here. Standard ones, what do you want to open it with? So if you've installed some extensions, it's normally going to ask you to open it with the native Zoho applications. But if you've got other extensions installed, you can open it with other things as well. And then a preview is just a standard going to bring up a quick preview without actually opening it. Uh, properties does give you a little more. Um, this is kind of interesting. It's going to bring you up to a page where you've got general info versions, activity and access stats. So general info, when it was created, when it was modified, is there a permalink? Uh, yeah, what type of file it is. Versions is really interesting because when you go into this, it's going to tell you that it's not going to give you the versions for this. <laughs> you actually have to go ahead and open the file in Zoho Sheet and then go ahead and look at the versions. But we're going to talk about versions a little later because this exact same screen kind of changes. So you can get to this screen, but it will give you different things depending on how you access it. And so we'll talk about that. It's uh, something work drive team you might want to pay attention to. Um, and then you've got just step, like I say, so if you do click on versions, then you're just going to go in, click on file, and you can go ahead and view the overall file version history. And it's going to tell you everything that happened to it. Uh, then you can click on activity. This is when it was created, when it was viewed, what's happened. So if you're working on a long document, you want to see who's working on it, who's done what, if they viewed it, if they accessed it. Oftentimes, maybe you'll say to someone, hey, everybody, I want you to look at this document and give me your thoughts on it. And you ask your team, hey, what'd you think of it? It was great. And you go look at this and no one ever looked at it. So, you know, this is <laughs> kind of place for a to fact check things like that. Uh, and also you get the overall access stats. So this is, you know, have you... How many views has it been looked at? How many times has it been downloaded? If you had a permalink, how many views came from them? And all of your links will actually show up here. So you can see the access for all of the different links that you set up. And we're going to go and dive into what those links look like a little bit down the road as well. Uh, you also can show the enclosing folder. This is kind of nice. Uh, this is only really going to be up here at the top where you're either in, you know, recent fold files, favorites, you know, things you've got labeled, those kind of things. Um, Oftentimes you're looking at a long list, you're looking at a file and you're like, well, actually, what folder is that in? I don't know. So if you choose enclosing folder, it's just going to take you and let you know it's down here in the sales collateral folder. So it basically it'll take you to that folder where that document lives. You can also from here get an embed code. So like a lot of the online uh, document management programs that are out there. If you wish, you can actually take it and make this document live on a web page. So by getting the embed code, copy that, give it to your web developer, and then go ahead and embed that on your website. And it's kind of nice if you're looking for something. I, I see people do this for down and dirty price lists, things like that. You know, anybody can go in and make the changes. They're instantly going to show up. They don't have to have access to the website. And one little interesting thing there with the embed code, and this could be its whole own video, so I'll just kind of toss it out there, is within applications like Zoho Writer, they can actually accept iframes. So if you had some type of, you know, quote sheet that you had worked up for someone, you want to include it in a proposal in Writer, you could actually embed it this way directly into that document as an element. So it opens up some interesting things you can do um, with these uh, documents in WorkDrive. Yeah, very cool. And like you say, we could do a whole nother video on that. We probably should. That would be a good one. The one of our tutorials that will drop out on this. Uh, and then of course you can get a new download link. Um, so if you want to give someone just a specific link for this to download it, um, you can create the link, give it a name, set a limit, set an expiration date, those kind of things. So maybe you really just want to, it's got one download and it's going to expire tomorrow. This is quick. It's like, get this now. I, it's sensitive information. You can kind of control things that way as well. Um, and also in here, it's kind of cool. If you're having a problem with any of the documents you're working on, you can quickly share it with Zoho support and uh, with the WorkDrive team. 
and basically make a comment. You can even give them a dip, their access level that they can have mm -hmm. to look at the document and go ahead and share it with them. And then that, that way they can look at it and maybe understand the mm -hmm. problem that you're having. And this, yeah, this kind of part of Zoho's like bigger push around privacy is that even a member of their support team has no way to view any of these unless you actually explicitly let them. So you oftentimes be asked to do that if you do need any help making a formula work in a spreadsheet or you're having some type of issue. Yeah, you know, PowerPoint, uh, oftentimes too, maybe you're having formatting issues there. Um, I find they're helpful with that as well. So nice little feature. And that again is just right in the same list. And of course, you've got the standard things where people can go ahead and add comments to the documents where you can put something in, you know, we should have some more data in here. I think we probably should um, for on our sales spreadsheet. And additionally, you can check out a document. Now, this is unique. So you've got a document, it's shared with people, you're the owner of it. And you basically decide you want to completely take it off. You don't want anybody to be able to touch it. So when you go ahead and check out a document, it can't be edited by any collaborators at all. Um, and all the changes you make on it won't even be visible until you check it back in. Okay. Now that shows up under the versioning aspect here. You'll notice this menu is the same as when we saw before. Um, you can check out the versions by opening it here, but now this whole check out, check in option also appears under the versionings menu, but it's only going to get there if you actually go to it this way. So it's the only way to check out a document or check one back in. And then you can also have a follow on updates. So let's say you are not working on a document or you are doing some things, but you're waiting for other people and you want to be notified um, when somebody is actually working on the document or doing something to the document, you can go ahead and do that and get your notifications set up. You can have it set up with a bell or it's just going to be, you know, inside work drive here or email or both. And once you start following it, when someone makes changes, and you're following it, basically it's going to give you a notification and you can go ahead and take a look and see what those changes are. Uh, you can also set this as a favorite when you do so. It's going to show up here in your favorites file. That's kind of standard stuff across the board as well. And of course, then once you've set it as a favorite, you can then remove it as a favorite. Another thing that Zoho has is fairly nice is the ability to add labels and you can customize these. So if you want to basically have Kind of another way of tagging things, I guess, is the best way to look at this. And there's some metadata that we're going to talk about later on in a little more detail on what that looks like. But this is just a quick, quick way to go ahead and apply a tag to something. And once you do apply a tag to something such as internal document, you'll see it appears here, but we've got nothing here on the price list. Once you go ahead and apply the tag, then that's going to show up here as well. And you can sort by that and search by that. Uh, just another way of kind of categorizing your documents. Uh, the rest of this is fairly straightforward. Copy to, rename, move to, and zip. I don't think we need to go into those detail. They're pretty straightforward. And then the last one, which is kind of nice, is if you're working on something, you also have the choice to save it as a template. And when you go ahead and save it as a template, it can be just one of your own private templates. You can save it to an org template. You choose where it's going to go, give the template a name, and away you go. So you've spent a lot of time working on a document. You've got it dialed in. You say, wow, this is great. We should be using this for everything. And you can go ahead and save it with a template. Let your organization know. Uh, and then now moving down the left side here. Now, if we go into our favorites, you can see I favorited this price list. And so there it is. It's now moved into my favorites folder. Anything that I've given labels to will appear under the label folder as well. You can then have all of your own folders that you can set up. You can view the folders that are shared with you. Uh, and then you also have this thing called collect files. This is really kind of cool. This allows you to create a collection of files that you're basically sharing with someone. So uh, you go through and you could have an internal collection or you can have an external collection. External collections are really, really, uh, I think that's where this thing really shines is the ability to create a folder, create a collection, share it externally. Uh, you've got a lot that you can really drill down on here. So you've got this internal, and now we're going to look at external. You can give the collection a name, right? What do you, what do you want these internal users to see? You know, put all files here that we need to work with, any notes you want to have, where it's going to go. You can set a number, a limit. And by the way, request user data name. This is kind of interesting. So basically, when a, I'll show you this in a minute, but when a user goes there, they have to put in their name. And so that way you can see who did those files, who did not. You can actually have them do name, phone, email. 
just to identify who's actually been coming into this shared folder and doing it. Um, you can set a limit on size, you can set an expiration on the shared file, and probably most importantly, notify you when there's a submission. It's one of the big things with share folders that it's always been a problem. You share a folder with someone and they go ahead and upload it and they don't even tell you that they've uploaded anything. You don't get a notification that anything's been uploaded. You maybe go down a meeting with them and you're like saying, hey, I really need that document. They're like, oh, I put it there a week ago. Um, this way you get that notification and you know that something's been shared and you can take a look at it. Uh, once you're done, it gives you a nice little link and you can go ahead and email that link out to anybody you want to. Uh, this is what that email gets when they, the one, this is what the email looks like once you've sent it out. So it gives them, we've got this collection we're going to do, here's your link. And when they open the link, it's like I said, you're basically going to have this little part where I requested their name. So they have to put their name in, in order to go ahead and access this folder. So you know who's there and then they're in. And from there, they can go ahead and drag and drop their files, upload whatever they want, and you will get notified uh, whenever a file has been added to that specific collection. And then we also have team folders. These are fairly self-explanatory. Tyler's going to go into them in a little more detail down the road, and we'll talk about what team folders are. And uh, by the way, you can also click on the team folders heading, not the folder itself, and it will give you a lot of information on these team folders. So you can see who has access, uh, how many people are there, when they were created, all of that kind of information.